Hey everyone, I'm Alfred. Welcome back to Hive Swap Friend Sim. We're on volume 7 now. Ever since you were a kid, back on Earth, you have always held the deep, close wish to one day travel the world. You wanted to see new places, experience exciting new tastes and altitudes and temperature. Maybe go scuba diving. You never imagined you would actually get the chance. That kind of cool stuff didn't happen to someone like you. Well, you're finally getting your wish. It's just a totally different world. Funny how life turns out. When you get back to Earth, you don't want to think about that. Who knows if it'll ever happen. You really chilled out recently, found your place in the universe. Drifting from friend to friend, adventure to adventure. Only way to live. That was a simple one. Okay, so we got an olive blood. Um, olive bloods are known for being hunter types, um, as far as I know. Nepeta is one, um, and she has like a cat thing, like a leopard. Then we have uh, another blue blood, same tier as Vriska. And she appears to have the same eye thing going on that Vriska did. Except Vriska had one eye with one pupil, and then the other eye had eight pupils. Or maybe seven pupils. Maybe it had nine with one, like one normal one and eight extra ones. The point is she had weird fucking eyes. We got Remily Namak and Connell Okima. You've wandered into a part of town that seems to have some culture going on. A lot of bright neon lights and you can't read what the signs say, but you can see arcades, a performance space, and what looks like a movie theater. Perhaps more indie-oriented compared to the mall cinemas you've seen before. As you continue wandering, you come across a trendy-looking building with a placard outside that shows a little cartoon doodle of a fancy waiter holding out trays of snacks. You can't recognize the symbol, what the words say, but you recognize the intergalactic signal for free food inside. Come on in. Oh. <laughs> We got Troll Mona Lisa, but she's a juggalo. Um, troll American Gothic. I hate this painting. I legitimately do not like this painting. Um, that's the Scream. I don't recognize the other ones. Head inside and appears to be an art gallery. Must be opening tonight because there are festive decorations up and a little table offering drinks and hors d'oeuvres. Or horse divorce, if you prefer. Many art appreciators here, and your adrenaline spikes, and you realize most of the trolls milling around are purple bloods. You're not sure if the paintings and snacks are worth the high chance of being maimed and when chaotic violence breaks out, but you're debating the merits of free food versus probable injury. As you're debating the merits of free food versus probable injury, someone approaches you. You don't look like my other patrons. Are you lost? Or are you perhaps looking to start collecting? If you're loaded, ignore that first question. Art is for everyone, after all, regardless of your blood color. The four black pupils in her eye glint and sparkle, and you're not sure if she's menacing, if it's a menacing or friendly sparkle. She grins at you, and it shows all of her teeth. So what do you think of the art? Have any paintings caught your eye? You look around. You don't know much about art, but you are a nerd, and a lot of the paintings here remind you of scenes from popular movies and games back home. Haha, <laughs> stop. You flatter air. She puts a hand on her hip and winks at you, and you're guessing she doesn't actually want you to stop. You're also making the connection that she must be the artist who painted all of these. You sense an opportunity for friendship, so you lay it on thick and gush about how talented she is. Huh. I thought you looked like a dumbass when you walked in, but you have good taste after all. Let me show you around. Alright, I found the accent. It took me a little going, but I've got it. You follow Remila through the gallery. Swinging by the table to free food first. Pretty good by the standards you come to expect, but what you thought was wine at first glance is actually Fago. No thanks. You may have noticed some themes in my exhibited work. I don't love clowns or gore as much as it may seem. That's just what I have for sale here. If you look at my work online, you'll see the full range of my art. But this fancy gallery shit, purple bloods are my best customers. These clowns fucking love art. They're rich as fjork. Oh my god, I love that. <laughs> and they'll buy anything as long as it's violent enough or features religious themes. You've seen the kind of destruction and mayhem Purple Bloods are capable of, so you're surprised she doesn't seem to mind being in a crowded gallery with so many of them. Most of the trolls you've interacted with have done their best to at least steer clear of the clown murder cult guys, at least when one of their hate romance relationships isn't on the table. Isn't it kind of dangerous to actively court them for her audience? 
Oh, sure. They can be unpredictable, and keeping them happy requires some schmoozing. Occasionally, I have to pretend like I've drunk Zafego and pull some religious references out of my ass. But it's nothing I can't handle. You can make a lot more money as an artiste if you're not choosy about what you draw. Like furry porn. They get paid more than doctors. One of my customers is this blue blood moron who only ever commissions me to draw low bloods and quadrants with other low bloods. I've got him convinced I'm giving him a deal on his rate when he's actually paying me five times what I charge anyone else. <laughs> and my point is, artistic integrity is for chumps. If you want to get ahead in this world, give the people what they want first. That strikes you as a depressing outlook on the creative process, but you're aware by now that idealism alternia leads to shorter lifespans. And you have to admit, looking around at the crowd in this gallery, her cynical approach seems to be working. You tell her she sounds pretty business savvy and attention to being talented, and she winks at you again. Thanks, I know. Because I make a bank doing shit like this, I'm able to fund my passion projects. You should really check out my webcomic. Before you can figure out what her webcomic is about, she notices another troll that's been sidling up to you. As she approaches, she whips out a small device, a small recording device with a smile. Remily's face goes carefully blank and she crosses her arms over her chest. And how can I help you? Uh, Jorno. Uh, yes, hello there, Mr. Demark. I'm with Alternia Knightley, and I must say, it looks like your first ever gallery exhibit has been a smashing success so far. The journalist's therapy tone and innocuous words don't seem threatening to you, but you're picking up on some tense vibes from Remily, whose hair ribbon swings forward in front of her face aggressively. Of course it's a success. I never expected otherwise. Mm, maybe not, but some in the art world have expressed uh, surprise at the timing of this. Some have called it bold, considering you're currently in the middle of a plagiarism controversy. Can't imagine why. Uh, would you care to comment against the tra uh, on the case against you by Trident Media? Um, the highest blood cast is associated with Pisces, which looks like two little tridents. Um, there are also fish people, so they use tridents because that's what you must do if you are live underwater. Uh, and the Empress Queen, uh, her imperious condescension, the Condus, uh, she's well, well known for her big ass pri uh, trident. Instead, by e being cough caught off guard by the question sprung on her, Remela relaxes and laughs. Oh, that. As if they have any kind of real evidence that I'm violating their precious intellectual property. All the characters I draw and profit from are entirely original, and Trident Media and their legislator are just mad about it because they know the whole internet knows that my storylines are better than the source material. Oops, I mean that the better than the unrelated creative works that my comics happen to bear a superficial resemblance to. Feel free to quote me on that. The reporter takes the quote and scuttles away. Remila seems unbothered, but you can't help feel concerned for her. Uh, copyright infringement is serious business. Is your new friend in legal hot water? Nah. Altenia has barely any copyright protections to st speak of. It's just this that little past Gorjak trying to stir up shit as usual. The company involved behind the company behind this lawsuit wouldn't even care if you hadn't gotten involved. It's no big deal. Nothing I can't handle. You go back to following her around the gallery, keeping her distance whenever a purple blood comes to compliment her work. You can tell despite her confident attitude, she is still thinking about the journalist. She taps her foot in front of the paintings whenever there's a lull in conversation, throwing glances at the door the journalist left through. You know, it's not like Altenia has a free press or credible newspapers. That reporter was probably hired by someone with a grudge to dig a bit dirt on me. Look at dirt with an E. I don't think that it was Gorgiak, actually. Too obvious. Amateurish. Now this speaks of my competition. The artistic establishment thinks that all I do is fan art and shouldn't be taken seriously as an artiste. All of their paintings are in the museum across the street, and they hate I've managed to put up my own exhibit. Across the street? Bro, that's not cool. The stuck-up pretentious bull scrubs have been trying to sabotage me for so long. She turns to you, her hands balled up in fists and the X in her eye flashing with passion. I've been waiting for the opportunity to strike back at them. If everyone is going to accuse me of being a thief and a hack anyway, I may as well steal from them for real. But the security is tight. Sorry, I got a text message. What is it? Oh. I thought it said get equipped with it like in Mega Man, but it just says get expanded storage on us. Google's trying to get me to buy stuff. 
I haven't had an accomplice until now. What do you say? Want to help me pull off a risky art heist? <gasps> <laughs> yes. Fuck yes. Hell fucking yes. <laughs> One of my favorite running gags in Homestuck is that whenever someone does something radical, they usually respond to it with, yes. Hell yes. Hell fucking yes. Uh, we get a little twist on it there, but... Ramla does one last round in her exhibit, saying goodbye to her patrons and grabbing her bag, which seems to be mostly art supplies, as you head out into the door, out the door and onto the street. The museum she wants to rob is at the end of the block, in a much bigger, fancier building than the one you walked out of. All the lights are off inside, and it doesn't have any lights advertising current exhibits. We can do this one of two ways. Follow the journalist and steal the keys, if she has them, or break in without them. Bust it down. I sounds risky now without spending extra time to pickpocket the keys. You suggest that if the crime is going to happen tonight, it should happen now. No time like the present. Good point. Let's go break into a museum. You scoot casually across the street to the museum on, on the corner. After seeing the kind of looks your uh, unusual appearance draws from passerby, Remela takes some fabric from her bag and wraps it around your head. Zia. Now people will probably assume you have horns. You're just embarrassed by them being tiny or malformed. Duck into that alcove shielding the museum's back door and wait for me. I'm going to circle the block first so we seem less suspicious. As you wait for Ramla by the door, the reality of the caper sets in. You'd been excited about the heist at first because who wouldn't want the opportunity to sneak around, steal some art, stick it to the man? Probably while a snazzy, snown snazzy snown track played. Fuck. Dyslexic. But now you realize that in heist movies they have blueprints for the place they're going to rob and you have no blueprints. It seems like a dire sign. Now here's the thing, right? If in a movie someone talks about the plan before the plan happens, it's always going to go off the rails. Don't talk about the plan and then it goes perfect, you know? Before you can get too swept up in your worries, she returns. Does she have any idea how to get into this place? Because the door looks pretty unbust downable to you. Yeah, I've got some tricks up my sleeve. I've never done this before, but it'll probably work. She works through her bags until she comes out with several paintbrushes of varying size, and then crouches down and uses the skinniest one as a lockpick. It doesn't work, but when she selects a different paintbrush with different bristles and uses some of the bristles bunched together, the lock clicks open. Ha! <laughs> oh, she's cute! I'm great at this. I bet I could be an incredible thief if I decided to do that instead of art. Do you ever take the time to sit back and acknowledge how great you are at everything? you tried to do and how much you trust yourself to never fuck it up when it counts you hope it's rhetorical because the honest answer is no you don't have a whole lot of experience acknowledging how great you are at everything you attempt your mental acknowledgements lately have mostly been the opposite of that maybe it wasn't rhetorical because Remla stays crouched down like that for a second looking at you like she wants an answer when you eventually come up with an awkward shrug she stands up and puts away her makeshift lockpick dusting off her hands and opening the door I guess not everyone can be at my confidence level anyway let's go Oh my god. That's the Sons of the Lambs poster back there. Is that Mordor? You follow her inside. A much to your delight, you see the museum has an infrared laser beam alarm system. It looks so cool, like in the movies, and you're back to being excited. Remless seems to do it too, bouncing on the balls of her feet next to you. Interesting. Very interesting. One of us is going to have to get across these beams to disable the alarm. The box to do so is across the room. There, see? But the lasers are so close together. You can see the issue. Remela is a natural for a troll, but she might be too troll to, tall to remove maneuver through these beams. I hate. Even if she bends over, it's going to be tricky for her to squirm through them all without losing her balance and tripping the alarm. But the trolls that designed this alarm system didn't have your hornless ass in mind when they thought of the potential intruders. You stoop over a bit to see if you'll fit, and sure enough, yes, you should be able to shimmy your way to these through these beams with a minimal contortion. Fuck yes. I knew I was right to bring an accomplice. Great thinking, me. And great high skills you, if you pull this off. You recall what she said about confidence and not trusting yourself not to fuck things up. And you're sure you've got this. I'm worried. You face the laser beams with your self-doubt shoved all the way down where it hopefully won't screw anything up for you. Take a deep breath and couch down carefully. So carefully. And inch your way towards the wires. It's the slowest you've ever crossed a room in your life. And there are a couple of moments when you teeter and almost lose your balance. You can hear Remela hissing through her teeth behind you at tense moments, but you press on without looking back. And then you've done it. You've reached the box to disable the alarm system. You have no idea how you're going to do that. All the buttons are labeled in an alien alphabet. Crap. 
Oh, that's right. I forgot you can't read. Press the one that looks like a meat hook but with angry eyes. And press the one that looks like a meat hook but with per beast claws. That should do it. Sounds bonkers to you, but you look back at the buttons. Her description of the letters are pretty spot on. You press the angry eyes and the cat claws and the alarm system makes a soft shuddering noise and clicks and shuts off. You're thrilled. You did it. Who knew some doing something right could give you a rush? This is just like the part of the heist where the heroes had a sweat for a minute but then defeated the unforeseen wrench in their plan. You're certain there <laughs> couldn't possibly be any larger wrenches in your plan still to come. Remily crosses the room to join you, giving you an appraising look with her hands on her hips. Not bad. Thanks for coming through for me like that. Let's give what we came here for. There's one work in particular I'm here to get. You follow her through the different sculptures, passing through sculpture rooms and oil paintings until uh, you reach a display of pieces that look inspired by pop culture. The paintings and prints in here remind you of Remla's exhibit. And when you look at her, you can see she's rigid, eyes flashing with a passionate blue tint to her cheeks. I can't believe they called me the hack. Such bullshit. Whatever, it's cool. It doesn't actually bother me. I just need to send the message they don't want to fuck with me. The painting right here is a direct ripoff of one of my early works. When I was naive enough to put my art up for free, without realizing it, it would get copied and someone else would get the credit and profit. God. Considering how much fan art Homestuck has generated, this is... This is coming from a very deep part inside the writer. You know? Well, I learned my lesson. I'll take this so they can't sell it. Rip off is a rip off. Make something even better and turn it over for a truckload of cash. She grabs the painting when the two of you are ready to heist roll out of there. You hear voices at the back door. And what sounds like a team of security guards coming in. They must have arrived to investigate the alarm system shutting down. You're ready to embrace your panic, but you stop hyperventilating when you feel Vremelay's vice-like clawed grip on your arm. Don't freak out. Follow my lead and we can still get out of this. You assume the whole heist is off now that the security's shown up, but to your surprise, Remla doesn't put the stolen painting back on the wall. She gives your arm one last reassuring squeeze before sauntering out the room with her head held high, moseying with no hurry towards the front door. You follow her nonchalantly as best you can. When one of the security guards stops her, Remla gives him a condescending, slightly confused look. Um, what are you doing here? My assistant told me she informed all staff I would be swinging by today to pick this up. Did you miss that memo? Give me a break. It must be easy to miss things, right? Because as a security guard, you probably get so much in co correspondence every day. Her four peoples somehow give her sneering eye roll extra sarcastic force. She yawns and with her free hand not holding the painting, flicks some non-existent dirt off her shirt. The security troll, a uh, burgundy blood judging from the sign on his cop hat, Looks uncertain and embarrassed. About that, I get it. I understand cross the wires. Since you're apparently too busy to do your job right, I'll catch you up to speed. I'm the artist behind this piece, and I've got a wealthy patron interested in commissioning something similar. Taking this as a reference to negotiate a better deal. There's absolutely no way these guys will buy her story. The two of you look so guilty, and you still have her yellow sash wrapped around your head, probably looking like an idiot with a head injury. But Remela is standing down this girl like it hasn't even occurred to her she might be questioned. You've never seen someone double down so hard on a story that is such transparent bullshit. If you want to waste more of my time and yours by calling your superior to verify, go ahead. He might not be thrilled this mix-up happened because you can't keep up with your emails, though. The security troll was already wavering, and at the mention of his emails, he cringes. His co-workers behind him shuffle around muttering to each other. He steps back, horns lowered in embarrassment, and waves you through. Waves you and Remley through with a muffled apology. You can't believe this is happening, but the two of you swagger out on the street through the front door, legitimate as anything. Dude, it worked! You don't stop until you turn the corner to the next block, and then Remlin leans happily against the wall and laughs, holding the painting happily to her chest. Ha <laughs> ha, suckers! Feels good to get away with things, doesn't it? It does feel good, you suppose. Mostly you think you're still reeling. How did you come up with a story like that on the fly? Had she guessed correctly that the security guard was the kind of wasn't some hyper organized zero, inbox zero kind of guy who'd never believe he could have missed a message? Remily gives you an odd look and reaches forward to unwind her sash from around your head and stuff it in her bag. I just winged it, man. You overthink things. My guesses are usually right because I'm a creative genius, but if going after him for emails hadn't worked, meh, I guess we'd been arrested and I'd talk my way out of that too. Wow. You find it hard to believe she goes through life so easily, with the young kind of unshakable belief she can improvise through anything. Don't you worry it'll catch up with her someday? You want the uh, long answer? It's this. Nope, I super don't. And if you don't get it, I don't know if it's the kind of thing you can learn. She picks up the painting again, looking, around the, looking down the street and away from you. 
Well, that was a successful heist. Now I've ruined the competition. I feel inspired. I'm going to take this home and paint. But hang on. With a sinking feeling, you realize she's getting ready to part, and this friendship might be slipping through her fingers. Sorry, kid. You seem like you're not totally useless, but I'm not one for long-term artistic collaboration. It's easy to tuck your way out of tight spots when you're on your own. Peace. You watch her go, shoulders sagging with disappointment. You guys stole from a museum together, escaped together, bamboozled the cops together. You should have bonded over your shared transgressions and culpability. Every crime movie you've seen has taught you that heists bring people together, but... Cultural differences? <laughs> ah, damn. Ah, well. I'll take a little break here and come back for the next one. Hey, we're back with a new shirt. Um, took a little break, as you may be able to tell. Um, it's a new day, in fact. Look, I've got a nice shirt on. And my comfy pants. Yes, that's right. My legs are shaved. It's true. You thought those femboy memes were just for the clout? They're not. All right. We were playing Hive Swap. Where were we? Uh, here we are. All right, we're now on to Connell Okima. Uh huh. Right now, your travels have brought you to what appears to be a normal road in an innocuous part of town. Not particularly upscale, but not exactly a rat trap either. Just pretty average. A row of those spiky purple bushes line the side of the road, and behind one of them stands a large, fierce troll who is glancing furtively up and down the street. That's less average. Hey, are you her? Huh? I mean, are you her? Are you who I'm waiting here for? Well, your first instinct is to tell her, yes, of course you are who she's been waiting for, provided she's been waiting for a new friend. But honestly, you weren't sure your stick's going to work on this girl. Of course, not what I was thinking. This is so infuriating. She's so late, I'm bored. Do you think she's coming soon? You don't know who she means, but you suggest she might be more comfortable waiting somewhere that isn't in a spiky purple shrub. Don't be stupid. My clients value discretion. I have to lay low. The shrub hardly manages to cover her, and standing behind it and shouting is definitely not making her less conspicuous. Neither is asking random passerby whether they are her client. Not that you can talk. Accosting people left and right and asking them to be your friend is kind of your whole deal. Ah. If you weren't country lady for... F I wonder who that could be. Um, that's probably that uh, bronze blood that we encountered a couple chapters ago. The cowgirl? Because she doubled her wise and lived in the country. <laughs> then who is? Almost sounds like... <gasps> it's her! Sorry I'm late. I couldn't... What in tarnation? You know that genteel charm anywhere. Well, my stars! I definitely wasn't expecting to see you around here. What a masterful coincidence. You are incredibly glad to see Skyla. And Lady, too. All unkidnapped and everything. You give Skyla a hug, which she enthusiastically returns. Yes! She nearly picks, uh, picks you up off your feet. Lady shoves her nose against her neck and gives you a few slobs of kisses. Who the heck are you? I have business at this bush. Maybe find your own? Sorry, but I'm the business your bush has been looking for. Wait, what? Your country lady? The very same. Sk the name is Skyla Corriga. Pleasure to meet you. Yeah, I didn't think you'd be a bronze. I've gotten that before, honestly. Oh boy, here we go with that troll racism. Oh boy. Also, by the by, this concerns them too. Put your hand on her shoulder. It does? It does? Sure enough. They were there when it tried to happen. Even helped me fight off the varmints who tried to take my alusis. Oh, yeah, you said something about that in your message. But I don't get it. What do you want me to do? Right, well, the bandits didn't get the lady, but the other kids haven't been so lucky. Low bloods have been hit especially hard. I want you to find the bandit's base of operations, and I want you to take them out. Permanently and painfully. Are we getting a plot? I kind of thought this was just going to be... Look at her arms. Holy moly. Sorry. Are we getting a plot? I thought this was all going to be like miscellaneous slab-happy shenanigans. 
Connell's mouth moves silently, like she's trying to reason through the steps of Skyla's conversation. Then she catches up and a slow grin spreads on her face. Yeah, yeah I like painful and permanent. But wait, you want me to get revenge for someone else's Lucis? Why? Well, a few of us got together and decided to do something about ourselves. Since there's no hope of the heiress of the drones doing anything to stop the bandits, and they elected me as spokes troll, uh, seeing as how I'm the oldest and least easily shook. Okay, sure. I guess the why isn't important. How much you got? I doubt any low bloods could afford my fees. Let out a bunch of country rusties. Lady starts to growl, and Skyla puts a pacifying hand on her head. Everything's fine, lady. We expect this, didn't we? We were hoping you'd be willing to do it out of the goodness of your blood pusher. Connell laughs so hard she spits. Skyla winces. <laughs> you got a pan disorder? If you think I take any charity cases, I don't work for pretty smiles. Keep your compliments to yourself, missy. That wasn't... Ugh. I didn't mean to say that out loud. Is she like a Frank Miller character? Is that her shtick? I'm trying to figure out what her quirk is, and it just appears to be capitalizing or bolding random words. And If I know one thing about Frank Miller, it's that he's a racist homophobe. But if I know another thing, it's that his uh, writing style often requires that he bold or inflate random words. Usually just for emphasis, because he thinks it sounds cool. As is the case with a lot of Frank Miller's career, he throws his hands in the air and said, Hey, it worked in Sin City. I'll just throw it in this. Why don't you just go find the bandits yourself? You know, for well, I don't have the means. But you do. It'd be a walk in the recreation field for you. You weren't so nasty and selfish. Or maybe you're scared. Ah, you. I'll show you scared. Oh hell. They look like they're about to throw down. You gotta do something to defuse the situation. Yeah, what? I don't work on spec. I'm only licensed on Alternia. <laughs> Just kidding, I don't have a license. You explain to Connell means working on spec means you are doing some work for free in hopes you are going to be paid later. You say it's unlikely the bandits only go after Lucy. There'd be that would be ridiculous when there's so many other things in the world to steal, like money. They probably have heaps of it in your hideout, and if she breaks in, you can just have it. Skylar doesn't want it; she just wants to save the Lucy. You were saying that you are so dang convincing, you almost convinced yourself. I'm not so sure. Sounds like you might be trying to fuck me over. You let out a scandalized gasp to convey just what an untoward accusation that is. You are shocked. Shocked. <gasps> Ugh. Fine. Anything to get away from this stupid bush. She kicks the prickly purple shrub so hard it uproops and sails across the street to land on the hood of someone's car. But you, you're coming with me. I'm going to hold you to that. If there's no money, I'll hold you tighter. And squeeze until your weirdly colored eyes pop out. Yikes, you believe it too. She could definitely do that. And here's your chance. You've got a ton of success stories proving that forced exposure is really the way to get people to like you. Sounds just peachy. When do we leave? Connell kicks at another bush. She seems to have an anger management problem. Well, you guess she is managing it. She's taking it out on the shrubbery instead of you or Skyla. We aren't doing anything. You aren't coming. Lady starts growling again, and Skyla looks like she wants to join in. Excuse me? Connell gets up in her face, moving way faster than someone her size seems like she should be able to do. Hey, don't underestimate the speed at which big people can move. Andre the Giant... When he wrestled, his promoters made him move slower so he would look like a big lumbering brute because people didn't believe that Andre the Giant could actually move that fast. You aren't coming. You'll just get in my way. You're distracting. Skyla's mouth twitches the teeniest bit. That is not what I meant. Ugh, you keep tricking me. I just meant you'll probably stop to save some bark beast wrigglers. Get us all cold. Skyla crosses her arms and tosses her hair. Fine. Counting on you, you two. You figure the operation gathering stage, the the information gathering stage of the operation is next. You've seen heist movies. You know how shit works. A lot of heist movies this episode. Carl just shouts at someone on her palm husk for a while and punches in some coordinates into a car you're pretty sure isn't hers. Takes you to the outskirts of the city, past long stretches of cracked concrete and urban sprawl. Not exactly the place you'd expect to find bandits who steal farm animals. You put this out to Connell. She tells you to shut up. So you do. Leave the car and walk the last few blocks. Bandit's operation is honestly not super impressive. It's a long industrial structure that looks more like a manufacturing den, uh, manufacturing plant than a den of thieves. 
Besides, it is something much more impressive. A sleek back black spacecraft. Not like yours. This is the Mercedes Benz to your banged up Malibu Chevy. Even before you crash landed, that thing was a piece of junk. Oh, holy shit, is that, is that an adult? Wait, the ship? No dingus. You followed her frenzied gaze, and oh, right, the troll beside the ship is taller than anyone else you've ever seen here. Her skin a darker gray, her claws incredibly long. If everyone you've met so far has been a kid, wow. They don't they all deal with stuff that even adults in your on your planet don't. Routine death, dismemberment, and like four different relationship dynamics. If there really are no mature trolls here, then where are they? Well they're in space, fighting the space wars. Wait, hold up. You're saying where you're from you live with adults? Uh, yeah. You all live on the same planet. Sure do. Oh wow. Maybe you're tougher than you look. Adults are terrifying. Let's get closer. You and Connell sidle up close enough to hear the trolls, uh, close enough to the trolls to overhear them haggling over stolen goods. So far, the conversation is too general to, uh, to tell if they mean the Lusa. Damn, they must have globes of steel talking back to an adult. I mean, I am great at rushing in without giving it any thought, but I'm not a total moron. The two trolls appear to come to an agreement. They shake hands and they shake hands and heading back into the warehouse together. What? So what do you think? What should we do? Huh? You? Connell's the expert here. Yeah, no shit. For punching. I am also good at slashing. But Astasia always does the thinking and the planning. He's the one with the eye brains and the big think pan. Don't tell me I said that, please. You assure her you couldn't tell Astasia anything at all because you don't know who he is. Oh, right. Astasia's a frustrating bold lord loser who sucks so bad also he's my mate spirit we've been together for sweeps he's supposed to be here but he's off busy doing some dumb bullshit i need to do the pans in the operation okay please do this for me oh dear one moment all right i just wanted to check that oh also uh as i learned Azdaja is apparently a future troll call guy Set to follow them in the warehouse. That way you won't be trapped in a confined space if anyone comes back out to check on the ship. You ready to do some James Bond-ass shit, taking behind covers and saying cover me. Maybe executing some sick rolls down the hallway. You can't do any gymnastics even when you aren't healing from broken ribs, but fantasy James Bond, you sure can. Colonel doesn't bother with any of that. She just stomps down the hallway down the f towards the front door. She hasn't she hadn't been kidding when she said she was more into the straightforward approach. You pick up speed to try to get to the door before she does, just to prevent her from charging in there and getting you both caught immediately. Good thing, too. Through the window and the door, you see what looks like some kind of break room. A couple of trolls are messing around on their palm husks, and a few more sitting at a table, and playing some little kind of game that involves cards, dice, and colorful shells. Oh, come on, there's not even that many. We can take them. Ugh. I forgot you were my partner, you're just dead weight. No real argument. Polypa told you that most pros work together for a reason. It's much harder on your own. You wonder if Connell would have been so hot to take the job if it hadn't been for Skyla's, uh, vibes. Yeah, that's the word, vibes. They were vibing. You have to do this. You have to rally. Connell is already losing faith in you. Or maybe she had no faith in you in the first place. Whatever. You choose a door, a different door at random and go down it. Assuring Connell you definitely know what the fuck you're doing. What? Where are you going? You've been down this road before with Diamond and your meat quest of the sewers. Did we? This is possibly slightly higher stakes. But the same basic principle applies. Fake it till you make it. Connell gets annoyed much faster than your other friend. If your sub-vocalizations are anything to go by, you need to step up your game. You think back on all the heist and infiltration movies you've seen. Huh. Maybe you can find a locker room or a troll laundry room and find one of those SWAT hazmat suits. Yeah, that'd be the best plan. Just put on disguise and wander around like a sneaky fucking oh god damn it. You're so busy... You're so busy focusing on your brilliant plan that you open the door without checking and find yourself looking at the trolls playing the card game. Somehow in your random quest through the warehouse, you manage to double back on yourself and come out the other side of the break room. Classic. This is a classic you. You're almost charmed by yourself, almost. Frozen moment when you, the bandits, just stare at you and Connell, perhaps taking in the truly staggering idiot level you have achieved. Thank fuck. Should have done this in the beginning. Oh god. You've gotten into quite a few fights since arriving on this planet. Well, mostly you've stood around while other people fought. But the point is Connell. She is beautiful. She is brutal. She takes almost the same number of bandits that you, Skyland Lady, did in a quarter of the time. Multicolored blood flies. Oh, God. God, you know these guys are bad guys. They've been stealing Lucy and stealing them. Which sucks. But right now, they're just a bunch of kids getting massacred. 
You don't feel great about it? I do. In fact, uh, you might need to sit down for a little bit. Your back hits the wall and you slide down to the dirty floor. You're clammy all over. Pathetic. Connell pulls her gauntlet out of the final troll's neck with a spray of yellow blood and a squelch that makes your stomach roll. She notices you on the ground. What are you... Ugh, are you serious? Come on. You try to tell her she volunteered you for the mission herself, but you can't slow your breathing down to get the words out. You're not sure why now is the time you finally freak out. Maybe it's the close quarters, or maybe you've been all turning you long enough for this multicolored mess to finally start registering as blood. Maybe you've reached your horror saturation point. Whatever. If you've learned anything from this experience, this is why of things doesn't actually matter. Connell looms over you, raising a goblin. She's gonna kill you. At least if you're dead, you can't puke on yourself. But instead of brutal stabbing, you feel a steady pressure on the back of your neck. Connell pushes your head down until it's between your knees. Take slower breaths, idiot. You follow her instructions. Too lightheaded to dwell on the absurdity of being coached through a panic attack by a girl who murdered like ten dudes. She's surprisingly good at this. <laughs> Dazza freaked out his first fight too. Wasn't even bloody. And the riddle wriggler passed out. I guess some blood casts really are built better for violence. She sits down behind you and pats you on the back. You wish she'd take off the bloody gauntlet first, but you appreciate the gesture. You were having a hard time reconciling this Connell with the one who had snarled at Skyla for being too nice. I'm multifaceted. <laughs> uh, I gotta start saying that whenever people are surprised by me. Also, fuck her. Which reminds me. She pulls her phone out of her pocket, smearing a little olive blood across the screen. Korga, got your bandits. She talks a lot louder on the phone than she does in real life. Yeah, no shit. Of course I work fast. Especially when I don't have anyone to slow me down with a bunch of tactics and plans. Yeah. Save it for your kismasis. She hangs up and glares at the phone. You tell her she really seems to hate Skyla. Connell's face goes a fierce shade of green. Don't be stupid. I barely know her. You don't press the issue. You also don't point out that these are the kind of obvious point. Yeah, what the hell? You also don't point out the kind of obvious point that these are probably not the only trolls in the facility. The one who had been haggling with the adult isn't here, for instance. But if Connell forgetting about them means less murder, you're all about it. There's no way the bandits are continuing their work after this. Connell also seems to have forgotten about the fact that she came in here looking to be paid. No, she's looking at she's looting the bodies. Great. A lot messier and takes way longer in real life than it does in video games. Having looted someone before, I can confirm. Going, like, flipping someone over to go through their pockets, especially if they've got a fucking jacket on. Uh, it's a nightmare. In the end, she ends up with five palm husks, a laptop, some jewelry, and little squares of plastic you think might be sci-fi credit cards. Ah, whatever. Barely anything here. That fight made it pretty worth it. Well, you're glad it was good for somebody, at least. You're trying. You're just trying to not think about it and maybe get outside as fast as possible. Whatever Connell wants to do with your outstanding dead at that point, well, you can square up out there. Yeah, don't worry about that. I'm not actually going to squeeze you. It would be too easy. It's like squishing a march bug. Fuck yeah, save by being pitiful. I doubt you have any money anyway. I mean, you are wearing an ablution robe. True. Oh, we're still wearing the bathrobe from um the 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 rich guy, the lawyer, um the teal blood. Connell helps you to your feet. You kind of want to ask of your friends now, even though the only bonding activity you've done together is combined murder and comforting, with her doing both of those things and you standing there like a dumbass. But really, you've made friends with worse people for worse reasons. Oh, here. Why don't you take one of these? She hands you a palm husk. Thankfully, it only has a little bit of blood on it. Actually, it might be mustard, like the actual condiment. But she's giving you a phone? Why? You don't have one, right? I mean, you don't actually have any pants. This way we can keep in touch. And you can tell me if you have any more jobs with an excellent violence level. Like this one. Here, let's exchange info. Palm husks are really useful. You can use them to call people and everything. You're not sure if she's making a joke. A joke. Possibly she thinks you're an idiot. That's okay, you can deal with that. But not only did you make a friend today, you got a gift. Holy shit, you killed it. <laughs> we did it! Yeah! That was fun! Um, so what do we got next? Got a teal blood and a bronze blood. Ooh, I'm excited. Uh, hey, that's this episode of uh, this. I wasn't intending to take a break between episodes, um, and I'm going to record more after this, so who knows? But uh, I'll see you guys next time. I've been Alfred. This has been Hive Swap Friend Sim. Buy it yourself. Play it yourself. Do all the other ones. Um, you'll miss story otherwise, apparently, as I'm learning now. 
Uh, but yeah, I'll see you next time. Bye.